Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how we can take our HTML5 template that we created in a previous tutorial and edit it and modify it so that we have a nicely formatted web page. So to get started I have my index HTML file open in my editor and I also have it open in my web browser. Now one thing that you might run into is when you're trying to edit your file, if I didn't have this open in my text editor and you open up the folder where my files are, right? So if I open up my folder, I have my index.html file here. So if you double click on it, it's going to open it up into a web browser. The tricky part can be to get this open in your text editor. All you need to do, whether you're using Windows or a Mac, is to right-click on it for Windows. If you have a Mighty Mouse for Apple, you can right-click or you can do Command-click and choose Open With. And then you have a series of options for your particular system of where you can edit it. So for the Mac, you want to look for Text Edit. And if you're working on Windows, you want to look at something like Notepad. So once I cho you choose something like that, then it will open up into your text editor. So we want to have a combination of our text editor open and the same file open in your web browser. And what we'll be doing is going through a process of making changes in your code and then refreshing it in the browser. So if you have an, a big screen, it's kind of nice to have them right next to each other so that you can go back and forth. If you don't have a very big screen, then you can just switch back and forth so that your editor is taking up your screen and then switch back to your browser and open it up and then refresh it. So the website that I'm going to build is for a company called Devon Ann Photography. And we're going to build her website and use it as a good example. So it's Devon Ann Photography. And so I'm changing the title so that when the user gets to the home page, this is what's going to show. And instead of our content goes here, we're going to do something like, you know, meet Devon. And then we'll paste in some code that Devon has given us that she wants to add to her page. Now, for your own purposes, you can just type in your own text. Uh, another site that you can go to if you want to generate some Greek text is kind of cool. You go to another page here in my browser, and if you go to, it's called duckisland.com slash greekmachine.asp. And you can select a language that you want to use for some placeholder text. So I'm just going to choose classical Latin. You can tell it how many paragraphs of text you want to use. So it, you know, you can figure out about how much text you think you might have on your page. If you, we're going to start with just plain text down here and you can also have the option if you want the traditional lorem ipsum starter text. So I'll choose that too. And if I click create output, then it gives me some text in here that I can just copy and paste and put right into my website. So if I copy this and then you could go into your text editor and paste that in so that you have some placeholder text without doing a whole lot of typing. But since Devon Ann Photography has given us some text, I'm going to use that for our example. So I've added some text in here. So what I'm going to do is save my text file, and then I'm going to switch back to my browser, and I'm going to refresh it. So now, depending on the browser that you're using, the refresh or the reload button will be in a different place. So I'm going to click that, and this is pretty much what your page is going to look like, regardless of the browser that you're using. Why does it look like this when our text looks like this? Well, let me explain how the browser works with your HTML document. Let's look at what happens when we make a request to a web server. So if I go to my browser and I type in a web page, let's go to dccc.edu. 
we go to this site, we've just sent a request to the web server. The web server that hosts DCCC's website finds the index page and sends the HTML and the image files to our web browser. Now our web browser gets all of that information and it reads the HTML file. So let me show you the code. Now on your web browser, it's going to vary slightly depending on the browser that you're using. Up on your menu, you can look for something like go to view and then choose view source. I'm using Safari and so I have a developers tab that takes me into the source. So I'm going to go in and show the source code. And when I do, it shows me this is the HTML that's used to display this web page. And some of the elements in here may look familiar or start to. At the beginning here, here's a doc type declaration for HTML. Only this is for an earlier version than HTML5. We have the opening HTML tag and you can see it has language equals English in here. We have the head tag, there's a meta tag with some content information, there's the closing head tag, opening body tag, and then the content that goes into the web page. So the browser reads through all of this and based on this information displays the web page. It reads all that and, interp and it interprets it as to where the image should go, where this text should go, what it should look like. So in order for us to tell the browser how to interpret our page, we need to use HTML tags. Just like we've started to use tags here to say this is part of the body and the content that's op between the opening and closing body tags should go in the body of the document. So in order to format or change the layout of what this looks like, we have to indicate to the browser by using tag structures how to display the content. So to begin with, one of the first tags that you typically will learn when learning HTML are the heading tags. Now the heading tags start with a letter H. So we have the opening and closing, the less than, greater than symbols. All your tags will be in less than, greater than symbols. And you'll learn to start typing that really fast. When you start typing it a lot, you'll get good at it. So we have heading one tag, which is the largest size heading. And I'm going to wrap Meet Devin inside that heading tag. So I'm going to put in the closing heading tag. So what this is telling the browser is when it gets to this point, everything that's between the opening and closing heading one tag should be displayed in a heading one format. So just with that little change, I'm going to save this and I'm going to refresh my browser. And you can see now that it has displayed this using the default heading one style. Now as we get a little further into this, we'll learn how to do things like changing the font and changing the color and even changing the size of the type, which isn't done using HTML. We use what's called cascading style sheets in order to format what our document looks like. So heading one is a markup tag to mark up to the browser to use the heading one style. So if I do photo style, I'm going to change, I'm going to put that in as a heading two style. Heading two is going to be a little bit smaller than heading one. And again, I'm going to save my changes. So I'm just using my keyboard shortcut to save. And then I'm going to switch back to my browser and I'm going to refresh. So now you can compare heading one to heading two. And we can go down heading one, heading two, and it continues to go down through heading six. And each one gets a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. But you can see that when we apply a heading, it also put in line spacing in between. And this headings create what are called a block element. It has its own block spacing. This heading one tag is a block which is separate from photo style which is a heading two and it's a separate block. And then 
the browser is just taking the rest of this and showing it to the best of its knowledge so it's just doing a default text layout and so we're going to put that inside paragraph tags so we use a P to indicate that this content is a paragraph so at the end I'm going to put in a closing paragraph tag now if I save this and I refresh it you really won't see any difference in this paragraph because that's the default style that it was using but it's good form so that you can fully explain to the browser how it's supposed to treat this text. And as you'll see later on, when we start to add style sheets to this, we'll be able to control how paragraphs are displayed, what font they should use, what kind of line spacing, sizes, and things like that. So we want to use these tags to mark up the content, and then later on we'll be learning to style that with using CSS style sheets. Okay, so we have a little bit of content in here. I'm going to put in a horizontal rule that's going to create a little line going across here. Nice to visually separate this because we're also going to add a couple of more paragraphs of text in here. So a horizontal rule is a standalone tag and I'm just going to put in the greater than or the less than symbol HR for horizontal rule and our greater than symbol. So that is going to create a little line going across. I'm going to save my file, switch back to my browser, and then refresh. So using heading tags can help the user to start to scan down a page to find important pieces of information. So let's add some more text to our page. All right, Devon Ann Photography has given us some more content to add in here that I'm going to paste in. Okay, and this is about me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a heading to style, just like I did with photo style. So I'm going to put in the opening H2 tag, and then I'll put in the closing H2 tag. And then these are two separate paragraphs. So I'm going to put in an opening paragraph tag for here and a closing paragraph and then an opening paragraph for this last one and a closing paragraph at the end here. So now that I have this content in, I'll save and then refresh it back in the browser and you can see we have more content in here. So that is the fundamentals of adding some content using heading tags and paragraph tags in order to lay out the content of your page.